Hello everyone and welcome. Let's play the basic training from Men of War 2 and learn how to play the game. Okay, welcome back. I'm here. You can see Men of War user interface. First, let's talk vision. You can zoom in or out with the mouse wheel. I think the audio might be a bit too high. Okay, zoom in and out. In order to move the camera horizontal, move your cursor on the edge of the screen. Great. In order to change the angle of the camera, hold MMB and move your cursor up or down. Basically, we need to hold the wheel of the mouse. So far, so good. To quickly move the camera over long distances, you can use the minimap. Just click, just left click over the desired area of the minimap. You can hide or show the minimap by pressing M. You're the commander and you can customize everything to your liking. To set the size and transparency, open the minimap setting uh, menu with Ctrl M. Okay. I don't need transparency. Missed the message? No problem. You can always open the message history window with H. Good. What else do we have? What's the hurry if you are just rushing towards a dirt nap? Take a look around before you jump to the next mission. So it doesn't allow me to do anything in this first, very first basic control. It all seems clear, you can start moving our vehicles, these tanks are waiting for your orders. First you need to select the units, to do this you can use the selected frame while holding down left click. Or just move your cursor over the units and it press left click, ok. We are moving. It's time to move forward, select our tanks, then move your cursor over the desired location to click right click. Send your armored vehicles to the waypoint on the road. On the spot, you completed the task and the note about it appeared in the task list. You can open it by pressing O. Okay, reach the waypoint. Finished. We are learning the very basics of, uh, of Man of War 2. Intelligence reports indicate approaching enemies. Commander. They are marked with red figures on the minimap. Order our tanks to fight back. First, select your tanks. I don't see any red figures. Oh, okay, now I see. We're overwhelmed. Thank you. 
Excellent work, Commander. The enemy has been defeated. Your contribution to this victory will be displayed on the match results window. Remember that you can always go back and complete any training mission again if you want to brush up and basic combat. Oh, okay. So I think I won. Reinforcements have arrived. I win. Let's go for the next one. <sighs> nice. We get a lot of rewards for doing control basics. Okay. Spawning troops. Spawn troops upon the list of the first echelon reinforcements. Press left click to choose the squad you need and spawn them by pressing right click over the ground. Troops are always spawned at a distance from the front line. And I spawned the tank. Command points determine the cost of a unit presence on the battlefield. The first number indicates the command points currently used and the second indicates the maximum command points available. Log logistical capabilities are represented by the image of rails that carry reinforcements echelons. To spawn a unit on the battlefield, you need unassigned command points and logistics points. The more command points are in use, the harder it is to transport reinforcements to the battlefield, and the longer it takes for echelons to arrive. Use your reinforcements to push the enemy from their positions. to destroy that anti-tank. I need to destroy the anti-tank and then I can destroy the others. Because the anti-tank will try to destroy me. I also destroyed the machine gun.
Try to make the most of your true spawning capabilities and don't leave them unattended. There will only be so many units and the enemy bleeding you to the point where you have nothing to fight with anymore is a distant possibility. Distinct possibility. Today, however, you completed your mission marvelously. My congratulations, Commander. I win. Great. Supply. Listen to me carefully, comrade soldier. We are preparing for an offensive, and your task is to provide ammunition for our platoon. The success of our operation is in your hands. That's why you need to bring ammunition crates here immediately. Execute the order. The supply crate is summoned and controlled in the same way as any other unit summoned from the echelon. To start replenishing the ammo of the unit you need, it must be in the zone that is around the ammo box. To do this, simply bring the crew with the box to the unit you need. The progress of replenishment of units with incomplete ammunition is displayed in the form of rompus icon with the image of cart cartridges. Okay. They are already getting ammo. Oh, I can bring another one. <laughs> Very interesting. We are waiting. The ammunition box is designed to store and replenish various types of ammunition in condition of limited supply by other services. The crate crew can be camouflaged with camouflage netting and protected with sandbags. And if having selected a soldier look into the inventory of the box by pressing the X key, you can find a lot of useful things needed in battle, which you can drag into your inventory. Supply crate costs zero... Um, command points and has the ability to capture and hold territory. Great. The motor battery should prepare a bridgehead for the safe advance of our fighters. But they lack ammunition. The success of the operation depends on this. Deliver the shells immediately, soldier. Follow orders. Summon a supply truck from the echelon and drive it to the unit. You want to replenish ammo. Unlike a supply crate, a truck's resupply radius is much larger, otherwise it works in the same way as the box. While units with incomplete ammo are in its zone, their supply of shells, cartridges is replenished. The replenishment progress is displayed in the form of a filled rompus. Okay, we need, we need to bring a truck. A supply truck can build a warehouse once, which will replenish the ammunition of all units within its zone radius. 
but it will take some time to build it. The construction progress will be displayed in the form of a rhombus icon next to the hit points of the truck. Remember, the warehouse is stationary. So to build a warehouse, select the truck and by selecting the fill warehouse uh, button on the hotbar, specify the place where you want it to be built. After confirming your choice with left click, the truck will drive to that place and start building a warehouse. Doesn't allow me. There we go, guys. You should be building it now. It should be remembered that the regular supply truck does not have any armor and weapons. Because of this, it is very vulnerable to fire, even from small arms. However, it has a number of advantages. Without occupying command points, it can mask his position. Tow guns, build a warehouse, and if having selected the soldier, click X key on the truck. You can find a lot of useful things in its inventory and move to the most necessary things to your inventory. Comrade, our tank needs some munition to support our offensive and defeat the enemy. I order you to immediately deliver the necessary amount of ammunition to our tank. Your mission is to ensure its firepower and help us achieve victory. Execute your orders. You can replenish the unit's ammunition using either a supply crate or a supply truck. Use all of the above supply units to replenish the tank ammunition. Okay, let's get the supply truck. It is much more convenient from my point of view. The tank commander reports that there is not enough fuel for our counterattack. We must immediately send a fuel truck to the tank to refuel it. Soldier, this is your mission. Execute. The call for a fuel truck is carried out in the same way as all previous supply units. A zone is visible around the truck, within the radius of which all equipment will receive fuel. The field progress is displayed as a filling rhombus with a canister icon next to the hit points. Third echelon available. It's also getting fuel and ammunition.
A fuel truck is uh, designed for delivering fuel to all types of vehicles. It has no protection of any kind and is highly explosive due to the very significant rate of transported fuel. The truck requires zero command points, can camouflage its position and can tow guns. Okay. I win. Let's go to the next one. Which is the basic infantry. Let's go. Basic infantry is the backbone of any offensive or defensive operation. With riflemen and submachine gunners, a good commander can manage most battlefield objectives including territory capture, defending and fortifying an area, scouting and eliminating enemy personnel, guns and vehicles. Various units in the game can form chains, allowing a squad to increase its fire efficiency and angle of view. Select the troops you'd like to form a chain, however, hover over the ground and stretch the formation markers while holding down right click. As soon as you release right click, the soldiers will line up according to the markers. Eye, an eye for the battlefield advantage is what distinguishes a successful commander from a losing commander. Try to make the most out of each situation and keep your troops covered and protected. Increase their chances of survival. Yes, sir. Sir. To order your fighters to stay covered, select them and move your cursor over the cover. You will see silhouettes that show how your soldiers will take their position. Press right click to give the order. Hold down right click and move it from the side to side to expand or narrow down the area within which positions are taken. Take cover. We're expecting guests. Oh nice. I didn't know this. So these uh, tutorials are more than welcome. The enemies are coming. Oh yeah, the enemies are coming. He's leaving. <laughs> Every tactical victory must be consolidated with the capture of territory by basic infantry. After a successful defense, be sure to mount an attack. Yes, sir. We'll do that. In progress. Any order can be resigned. Press the hotkey Z to make your unit stop moving and shooting. Yes, sir. I hope it doesn't ex expect me to press Z. Okay, I did press Z. To capture territory and move 
the front line, bring infantry to it. The larger the force uh, pressuring the front line, the quicker it moves. Armored vehicles, while unable to capture territory, can pressure the front line, thus speeding up the process by virtue of their presence. If you've been caught unawares and have no time to take cover, the best option is to order the infantry to lie down. Use page up and page down to issue orders to change stance. To order soldiers to lie down in place, press lie down on the hotbar or space. Engage and push over the enemy. Basic infantry is like nails and a hammer. A good craftsman can use them to patch up a hole in the front line or smash through enemy defenses. But remember, these are not the only tool in your toolbox. Okay. The task is completed. Field guns. Welcome Commander, right now you only have artillery gunners under your command. They consume zero command points and don't require reinforcements. Echelons to spawn, their main application is manning and using guns. This tutorial stage is about towed and non-self-prepared artillery. As the name suggests, it must be moved using vehicles or crew manpower. Artillery gunners have the ability and the duty to carry out this task. Non-self-propelled guns can be in, in one of two states, mobile for transportation and stationary for firing. While mobile a gun, mortar, machine gun, etc. can be moved but cannot be fired. Conversely, while stationary it can be fired but not moved. Commander, select your artillery gunners and take control of the machine guns, mortar and field guns by the roadside. Note that a single gunner is sufficient for firing a gun. A crew of at least two is required to move it, but only a full crew gives you maximum survivability. non tow guns expose their crews and who can thus perish easily in the barrage. The more gunners there are in the crew, the longer it will remain combat capable under enemy fire. Now select your guns. To switch them from mobile to stationary mode, use the hotkey Shift plus V and Shift plus Z or space. If you give an order to move, non-self-propelled units will automatically go to mobile mode to start moving. Upon reaching their destination, they will go back to stationary mode. So basically, if I give them... Stop. 
Shift Z, Shift X. Cannons, machine guns, mortars, and other guns can fortify their position and put up a camouflage net, but only while they are stationary. Commander, use your newly acquired weaponry to reinforce your right flank. To do that, order your units to move to the appropriate positions. Then use the remaining gunners to man the guns on the left flank. Okay, let's move everything over here. Machine gun position. So, machine gun position. Mortar position. This is a machine gun. One man is enough. Make sure your right flank guns are in position to fire stationary. Then fortify their position in uh, any way using hotbar buttons or hotkeys shift plus F, shift plus D, depending on the individual guns available fortification option. Okay, they are stationary. So they need to fortify. prevent the Germans from reaching the road at any cost. If the movement of the division's rear detachments is interrupted for even a few hours, our advance in this direction could grind to a halt. Not bad, Commander. You managed. I think you'll agree that despite their uh, frailty and lack of significant armor protection, artillery guns offer a number of useful advantages. They are compact, inconspicuous, and relatively cheap in command points. And they often get to fire first. Keep that in mind while composing your army. I win again. Your multiplayer reward. Okay. Play a battle in any mode or complete a mission in any campaign. Okay. Vehicle control.
don't forget to subscribe to my channel guys also if you wish to support me you can do so by selecting memberships Armored vehicles are categorized by chassis type into wheel, tracked and half tracked. Each of these types has its advantages and disadvantages. For example, tracked vehicles can turn on the spot, while wheeled and half tracked ones uh, need space to perform a turn. On the other hand, a damaged wheel will only slow down an armored vehicle, whereas a damaged truck track will render it completely immobile. Take note of whatever vehicle has a turret. It allows aiming to be independent of the angle of the vehicle's hull. Uh, that is, unless the turret has been disabled. Non-turreted vehicles can only aim their guns within a narrow range of rotation angles. These differences influence how individual vehicles execute in order to turn tracked vehicles turn both their hulls and their guns. Half tracked ones only turn their turrets and guns to order a vehicle to turn around, press the hot bar button or use the hotkey R. Nice. Maneuvering is one of the most important aspects of combat. Try not to expose your vehicle's rear or size to enemy attack. Keep this in mind uh, even while uh, retreating. Armored vehicles have a reverse movement which you can use if you click to order the unit to move a little uh, way backwards. On double clicking or clicking outside the zone, the armored vehicle must turn around before beginning to move. We have a little video here. A group of enemy forces is headed your way. Defeat it and support our infantry in the fight for territory control. Armored vehicles are often equipped with more than one weapon. Coaxial and anti-aircraft uh, machine guns significantly increase a vehicle's firepower. Most type of weapons allow the player to fire at any range. AI, on the other hand, will only open fire if they are suitable targets within effective firing range.
you can assume direct control of almost any unit in the game. This will allow you to to WASD move them as well as fire tune the trajectory of a shell or grenade or the part of enemy tank you would like to hit. Besides, direct control allows you to choose the optimal movement for firing a shot, which can be a decisive factor in a duel. There are two direct control modes, activated by holding down control or pressing the hotkey E. While direct control is on, first person and third person view is available for most armored vehicles. Select an individual and press hot key E and use shift plus Q to toggle camera modes. Use the scroll wheel for finer adjustments of the direct control camera. So press E and then use shift Q. E, shift Q. It's important to know and remember the vulnerability of various armored vehicles. Don't get too close to a mass of infantry that may be that may have grenades or anti-tank rifles. If possible, avoid exposing your armored vehicles to flanking fire from anti-tank weaponry. Try to maneuver and use your guns as effectively as possible to avoid giving your opponent a chance for counter-strike. Whether a unit is used efficiently greatly depends on your knowledge of its strengths and weaknesses, as well as correctly assessing the situation on the battlefield. Don't get into fights where the odds are stacked hopelessly against you. I win again. Field fortifications and barriers. Commander, we're expecting an enemy offensive in this area. This is why a first objective is to reinforce the motorized rifle regiment's outpost. Call in riflemen and submachine gunners. Your soldiers can erect fortifications and dig trenches, but specialized support infantry does a better job at such tasks. Support infantry engineers and sappers can be spawned using the default hotbar displayed when you, uh, when you have no units selected. Use the hotbar to spawn support units for a task such as digging a trench or evacuating a wounded soldier. Upon carrying out the order, support infantry will automatically retreat behind your lines. As for basic infantry, its capabilities are determined by its inventory. A submachine gunner can dig a trench, but a rifleman can also build a breastwork. All of these commands have their corresponding buttons and select a squad hotbar. To build a breastwork, select your rifleman and press ALT plus C. Then select the starting spot for the breastwork and press left click. Drag the mouse cursor to set the length for the fortification. Press left click again to order the breastwork to be built.
Breastworks protect soldiers from bullets and small sharpener while providing a larger arc of fire than a rifle pet. Therefore, the optimal types of infantry to place behind a breastwork are those for whom arc of fire matters, such as machine gunners or anti-tank riflemen. Select infantrymen and press Q to order them to dig a trench. Then left click at the starting spot for the trench and rotate the mouse wheel to set the rifle pit density. Press the left click again where you like to, the trench to end. You can also order the infantrymen to dig in on the spot. To do that, press Alt Q, press it again to deepen the existing rifle pit and then connect the rifle pits with the trench. Remember that some terrains such as uh, tarmac roads or swamps make digging an impossible. Okay, they are digging. In a trench, your soldiers are well protected against small arms, fire and sharp now, but have limited arc of fire and difficulty maneuvering. Besides, your infantry will hide in a trench under dense enemy fire. A squad suppressed in this way can be easy prey for grenades or an assault with short range weapons. Commander, enemy infantry is approaching your positions. Are you prepared to defend? Everyone take your positions. My guys are still digging. Looks like I survived. Use engineers or miners to further fortify your position. Spawning support troop does not consume command points or affect logistic timers. You can task these squads with laying anti-personnel and anti-tank mines, getting up anti-tank barriers and barbed wire, digging a trench or placing sandbags. Okay, where are they? <laughs> I already got something else. A barbed wire barrier is worth putting up anywhere an enemy infantry is likely to break through. Barbed wire is set up using the same procedure as other kinds of barriers. Press Alt plus G, choose a spot for the start of the barrier, drag it and give it an order by clicking on the spot where it is to end. Oh. Okay. We need to make something.
The reason I'm doing this is because I need engineers. Set up board wire. Yeah, I need them. Okay, I found something. Somehow I managed to build somehow the engineers pound from somewhere. No idea how, don't ask me. See now. I will build some anti tank. Use the same sequence of actions to set up anti tank uh, barriers. Press Alt plus E, choose OK. Okay, already the engineer squad are busy. Barbed wire stops the advance of infantry, but not of tanks, while the converse is true for the SEC, Hedgehog, anti-tank barrier. These reinforcements should be used to slow down the enemy or funnel them in a desirable direction such as towards a minefield or an ambush. Powerful explosives or large caliber HE ordnance can destroy these reinforcements, but even that takes time. Alright, we've got some more reinforcements. We should be ready for the next attack. Wait, these are anti-tank mines. Okay guys, we're building them. Mm, they're coming from so far behind. Okay, let's see the attacks. The enemy is attacking. Everyone take your positions.
Alright, we've destroyed them. Oftentimes, an infantryman is not killed but falls down wounded. If you have medics and uh, the wounded soldiers on your territory, they can be saved. To do that, press right click on the blood drop icon to call a medic who will carry the infantryman behind your lines to be healed and eventually ready for combat again. Victory is achieved according to a number of factors and successful actions. Good defense, shelters and corrected use of support infantry are among such factors. And currently engaging the enemy not the area behind your lines. Indeed, wars are not won with defense and trench alone. Okay. We have finished another one. Field fortifications and barriers. It was reconnaissance. The next one. Okay. Commander, in this operation, you must locate the positions of enemy artillery. You have a scout at your disposal. Each unit in the game has a field of view. The scout has a particularly large one. This allows the scout to notice the enemy before being detected. Explore what's ahead. The enemy's uh, visor zone is highlighted in red for any scout. And once your unit enters that zone, the enemy will notice them immediately. Okay, let's use the bypass route. Nice. It feels like in commandos. So we managed to get around this once. What's next? Enemy artillery positions should be behind this bridge, but it's very well guarded and probably rigged with mines. Use the four downstream to flank them. As for the patrols, you can either neutralize them or wait them out. Okay. So they need me to cross the river. Cross the river through here. If a scout enters an enemy field of view, detection indicator in the form of a red eye will appear above the scout. If the enemy loses sight of him, the eye will be replaced by a red light symbol. Then a green one after each will go away a soldier's stance affects their visible range. Upright maximum detection range, slitting, medium detection range, lying down, near minimal detection range. The further reduce the soldier detection range, use camouflage, opening fire will unmask a scout.
I don't know what happened previously. So when I go like this, I have full... Nobody will see me. I can cross the river. So basically they saw me. Let us find the other guns. They saw me. Okay, I found the other gun. Dude. Why are you attacking? Great. Let's go for another one. Damn, they have a tank. It's better to not risk it and hide. Tanks have a limited field of view, so it's enough to move away a little to prevent the enemy from seeing you. Scouts can be used to detect enemy forces hidden by the fog of war. Scouts are one of the several types of stealth infantry. Other include saboteurs who destroy valuable enemy vehicles and infantry, and spotters who increase the accuracy of friendly artillery in their immediate area. While stealth infantry makes combat tasks simpler for the main force, it can fully replace that force, which can also need to control. Okay. Armor piercing. Let's go. Russian 
tank! A Russian tank! Everyone take cover! Light guns and anti-tank rifles often lack the armor penetration to hit the hulls of heavy vehicles. However, they can damage and disable some of these vehicles' individual modules such as tracks, gun barrels, wheels or mounted equipment. It's something more useful to immobilize an enemy by breaking one of its tracks. For piercing through hulls, use high armor penetration guns. Armor piercing and subscaliber shells work best against armor targets. They deal damage after penetrating the armor. If the target armor is weak, you can use high explosive ordnance. These have lower armor penetration but deal more damage once they are past the armor. Your current target is a well armored heavy tank. Firing a 75mm here shell at it is pointless. It's better to use an armor piercing shell and hit the tank in one of its weak spots. Looking, full, looking for vulnerabilities is best done in direct control mode. Press E or hold down control to take direct control. To get a better idea of what your gun is capable of, take direct control of the SPG and aim at the enemy tank. The crosshair is a cursor you can use to direct the barrel of the gun. The white circle shows the area of the shell can hit. The color of the crosshair indicates the chance of the penetrate the armor. The armor penetration marker can have different colors. Red, low chance to penetrate. Yellow, medium chance to penetrate. Green, high chance to penetrate. However, bear in mind that the shell can hit a different point within the spread of radius with a different likelihood of penetration. This video shows how the armor penetration markers work in direct control camera follow mode. Nice. Not gonna punch through it from here. Gotta get closer. Several factors affect the armor penetration value. One, distance to target. Uh, the penetration capability of an armor piercing shell decreases with distance. The closer the target is, the higher the penetration stat. It's important to find a balanced distance at which you'll be guaranteed to hit the target but without taking uh, any unnecessary risks. The, two, the target's anatomy. The thickness of a tank's armor is uniform. It's not uniform. Some of the plates or parts can be weakly armored and thus pierced with a well-aimed shot from even a long distance. The angle of shell to armor contact, the smaller uh, that angle is, the more armor the shell has to penetrate, including the likelihood of ricochet. Aim as close to a right angle impact as possible.
ему шанса. Приготовиться к стрельбе. So don't you tell me I lost. Okay guys. This time I'm gonna go on the side and I'll just shoot it. I was a bit too confident previously. It should be much easier now. The turret is destroyed, therefore it cannot fire at me anymore. Track damage, driver died, hull pierced. The tank is burning, mission accomplished. To destroy armor vehicles, you must factor in armor piercing and the capabilities of your available anti-tank weaponry. And I win, it was that simple guys. That simple. Armor piercing, okay. Anti-air defense. Attention, American fighters are approaching. Hurry to your vehicles. We need to prepare our defense positions to confront the enemy. To occupy an empty vehicle or horse, you must select infantry and click and right click to into transport. If you click twice, the infantry will follow your order more actively. This guy with the horse is the fastest. I think the horse messes up everything. Any artillery piece can be at attached to a car, an APC, or a tractor, or even a horse, and transport it to a position convenient for you. To do this, bring the transport close to the gun. When uh, you hover your cursor over it, it will appear as an animated chain. This means the gun can be attached. Click, right click to make the coupling happen. Okay. I attached the gun. Okay. We've got three pieces. First fighters already within sight. Quick, move it. You must take up positions and repel the attack. Hurry up.
After the gun is delivered to your desired position, press Alt D or the hotbar button with the image of broken chain to detach it. The horse is much slower. Okay, the artillery are in position. We must occupy the gun now. Exit vehicle. That guy doesn't want to get off the horse. doesn't want to exit the vehicle Verstanden. okay I'm get I'm gonna get this guy this guy is way too in love with with the horse Jawohl. and I won't even get on the bike because I fear he might like the bike too much Guys, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, make sure to do so. And uh, don't forget to check out the memberships. Okay. Anti-aircraft guns have several modes of operating. Anti-aircraft mode is turned on by default, displayed on the hotbar as barrel pointing upwards. In this mode, guns attack air targets even if hold fire mode is set. This is convenient because air defense systems do not give themselves away by shooting at non-air targets. Anti-aircraft guns also have another mode that can be activated by pressing the hotbar button with the image of barrels printing up pointing outwards upwards and the button will change the image of barrel pointing straight 
In this mode, anti-aircraft guns will also shoot at ground targets. This, to switch modes, you can use the key combination shift blessing. Let your determination and discipline be your weapons to defeat the enemy in the sky. Prove your unquestioning loyalty and do not shame the honor of the Reich. Whoa. Those planes crashed. The objective has been completed. The automatic anti-aircraft gun, in addition to fighting low-flying targets, is good at anti-aircraft gun. It's good at fighting ground units and can also fight light and even some medium tanks. High-level anti-aircraft guns can pose a serious threat to enemy tanks of all major modifications. Air defense positions can be strengthened with bags and camouflaged with a net. <coughs> it's another victory for me. Air Force. There you go. There's a bridge. Greetings, Commander. You have orders to provide support to the 5th Sapper Regiment, which is defending this area of the front line. We have received intelligence that the enemy possesses heavy artillery. Unless we disable it, our riverside positions are going to be pulverized. Your first echelon includes a reconnaissance aircraft. Select the aircraft and press uh, right click over the spot on the map you like to scout. Let's go. While flying over terrain, the aircraft reveals it and detects enemy forces, with the exception of saboteurs and units covered by camouflage men. Your second echelon includes assault air force. Click the IL to account on you on the unit selection panel, but don't dispatch it to the target right away. Take note of the hot bar showing the airstrike option for the aircraft. Okay. So basically we will have some options. After the aircraft has taken off in the lower right corner on the hot bar, you can select the condition for the aircraft to retreat. If the aircraft has more than 30% damage or if it hits the first time, by default, this condition is turned off.
Nice. I disabled all of them with one shot. Great job. No artillery. They don't stand a chance. Paratroopers are now available using the same procedure as with the other types of air force. Airdrop a landing squad on the designated point on the map. Going further, try to choose landing areas which enable the paratroopers to immediately take over or eliminate an important target. Paratroopers capture their surrounding territory immediately upon landing. This can be used to swiftly cut off the enemy's reinforcements or establish a bench beachhead for a future attack. In the hands of a capable commander, Air Force can become a formidable instrument of war. Use it smartly and remember that it's vulnerable to enemy anti-air defenses. Once again, I won. Counter battery fire. Let's do it. If you want to uncouple a gun from a tractor, select the unit and press Alt-D or the hotbar button with the chain link. Howitzer and mortar batteries are best placed on low ground or behind obstacles to avoid direct enemy fire. After howitzers are placed, it is recommended to reinforce their position with bags by selecting the corresponding hotbar button. Bags will protect your gunners from enemy fire. It is always important to reinforce your position. Okay, they recommended low ground, so I'm gonna go here in the valley. <clears throat> it's a very good thing to know this one. Personally, I, I always p put them on the high ground so I have visibility. Okay, deployed and fortified. We tried to take control of this road, but the damage damn machine gun are firing without letting the strike out. Okay.
I might have made a mistake here. I put them in the low ground. Fires. When you fire at enemy positions, the chance of artillery being detected increases. You can control this with the light bulb indicator. With each shot, the progress bar of the light bulb gra gradually fills up. Uh, you are still not visible, but you are making noise. In this case, the enemy sees a glow on the terrain. Where your artillery could presumably be. The longer your guns shoot continuously, the faster the light bulb indicator switches uh, to the eye. In this case, your artillery becomes visible to the enemy both in the minimap and on the terrain. Okay, we've got the eye. Artillery has spread circle that shows the limits of firing on the target. Howitzer and mortar artillery has two other special type of firing at positions, and you can find them among the first hotbar buttons. Fire at enemy positions when selecting this button on the hotbar. Specify a target on the map and confirm your choice by pressing right click. In this case, the spread of your gun is reduced with each shot, which will allow you to fire at a given point more accurately. Preliminary bombardment uh, when selecting this button on the hotbar, specify a target on the map and also confirm your choice by pressing right click. In this case, your gun delivers uh, imprecise but frequent fire at the selected position. Great! When your artillery stops firing, the eye visibility switches to the light bulb glow in the area where your artillery is located. Later, if the artillery does not fire, the progress bar of the light bulb decreases, then disappears altogether and you become invisible again. Sounds good to me. We have gained a foothold in the trench area, but damn it, their artillery is shelling our position. We need your help. Take out their guns. A glow in the terrain can indicate a likely location of enemy artillery. 
If the enemy does not stop firing, they will soon give away their location completely. However, it is not necessary to wait until they reveal themselves. You can already start firing at a su suspected enemy artillery location. It is important to remember your own stealth. Control the light bulb indicator and its progress part to remain undetected. Otherwise, you may become a victim of the enemy. When you camouflage your position, it allows your artillery to remain undetected for longer. When a cam camouflage gun is firing, the progress bar of the light bulb fills up more slowly. Always take an opportunity to camouflage. Camouflage is done by using the hotbar button. Okay, you are not camouflaged. Now both of my guns are camouflaged. Okay. They are firing from this area. Both my artillery positions are visible. Okay. The enemy as well. Always fortify and camouflage your position. This will save your gunners and give up an opportunity to fire longer and detect them. And the most important thing for any gunner, do not forget to change position, especially if your location has been revealed at least once. I won guys, I'll stop here now. This is the full tutorial. Thank you for watching, make sure to hit the like button and the subscribe button if you enjoyed the video. Don't forget that G2A is my official sponsor if you're planning to buy games cheaper than on Steam, that's the place to be, link in the description, thank you very much.